So I guess it's just me. <laughs> so hi guys. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, those of, I'm Tony Oliver. Um, I was one of the original producers of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I was also the ADR and voiceover director for the show for the first three years. Well, two years actually. Yeah. And, um, and then went back and worked a little on Ninja Storm when they went over to New Zealand and kind of showed them what we did. So um, we're going to talk about voice acting. A third of the cast of Power Rangers when we did it was uh, were voice actors. Um, Rita Repulsa, uh, God, I can't remember Zordon, and all of those guys. Alpha. So, uh, a, a tremendous amount of the show, at least a third of the show, was, was, wasn't recorded until after we were done shooting and editing the show which gave us an interesting chance to fix the problems that we had, but also uh, to get some, uh, some voices in there that weren't muffled by all the latex they wear over their faces. So. And you introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Latham Gaines, and uh, I was a Mezzagog. I for both of you. And also, yes! And also, also the voice of Mezzagog. So it was fun. I actually uh, had never done any um, voice acting before, but um, and the original plan for Mezagog was not for me to do the voice. Uh, I was going to move the mouth and um, be Anton Mercer, and we were going to do the voice later. So maybe I was going to record my voice and we would change it. But I came up with a voice uh, on set that Doug Sloan liked very much, and uh, we kept doing that voice without any um, help, actually. I've had several people ask me in the last couple of days, did I do the voice, or what did they do to the voice? I just said it was just me. Just me doing the boys. <laughs> Die, Luthor. And this time, me mad. <laughs> Bottom line, without these guys, we didn't have a show. Just didn't have a show. Of course. Because uh, the, 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 the monsters and the, the bad guys, they can't, they're so silly, they have to be good vocally in order to make it work. And, um, and we, the show was very blessed when I was on it, and obviously since then, there'd be you know, some really good voice actors working on it. Um, in the original series, some of the top anime voice actors was who got to do it, and they're still around. And um, but by the time you were on the show, we were developing new, new actors and people into it that would have a little bit more broad experience. Yeah, I think I was saying this last night actually that the, the, the changing uh, the show to New Zealand actually uh, changed the show quite a bit. I was talking to some of those guys last night, the older, um, the guys from older series. Um, because when, in, in New Zealand, working on the Power Rangers was really the, one of the best jobs you could get, if not the best job you could get. So the very best actors in New Zealand were more than happy to work on this show. Um, and so there were quite a few of us who have lots of experience doing other things, and we were Real happy to come on the show and love the creativity of the show and have been great producers. You know, Doug Sloan, who I work with, very creative guy and really fun guy. So the whole vibe uh, in New Zealand that, that I was on was, was just great fun. And we were made to feel like we could contribute to the show. Very um, top of the line production quality on it. And uh, like I said, it's, it's an excellent job in New Zealand. It's a job that you want to get. And, well, half the crew of that show when I was when I went to visit had come off of Xena. Exactly. So they're doing major. Television. And now these same crew guys are the same crew guys that worked that worked on King Kong and on Lord of the Rings. These are the exact same grips and camera ops and all this kind of thing. So you have the very best crew that you can get in New Zealand. They are world class. They're working on this show. So there's no corners cut on the way Power Rangers made New Zealand. I mean, it is. It's, it's quality. As opposed to our show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had the tremendous advantage of having that face of the show. It's already popular, it's already the money. And for me, I studied the show before I started working on the show. I was so impressed by the popularity of the show and so impressed by what it had done. My parents have some friends in Alabama who were karate experts who watch this show every single week to watch the quality of the stunts and the karate that's on the show. This is no joke. I mean, these are these are 30-year-old karate experts who sit down ready to watch this amazing stuff. I've never seen anything more impressive than these stunt guys, the way they do on this show, what they can do, how quickly they do it. It is unbelievably impressive. Well, Power Rangers is actually kind of an, un, it's an unofficial style of martial arts now. Yeah. Like stunt guys talk about there's Power Ranger style, and percent us, and so it's, it's developed its own identity. By the way, this is uh, Neil Kaplan, just walked in. Thank you. Thank you. I think everybody here already knows. Um, <laughs> I played lots of splat guys and fighting guys, but mostly 
Destrexo, uh, Gluto, and, and Diabolico, which was a personal favorite. Um, for me, it was sort of like joining the Basketeer Club. You know, it really was, it was my entry into uh, leaving the Bay Area and the comforts of uh, my own created stuff and coming down to LA. And at, back then, actually, there were notices in drama law for, um, first for Power Rangers and then for Beetleborgs. Uh, they were for on camera, and goodness knows, uh, anybody who sees a bootleg videotape of me and Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat back in 1983 <laughs> and seeing me in spandex, I would never be a ranger. Um, <laughs> but the voice is a different story. Uh, so I really got the chance to cut my teeth with, with a lot of with a lot of, a lot of really talented people. You know, a lot of people from uh, radio in the 70s, you know, that were the backbone of uh, the, solid, uh, the solid voiceover production work that was coming out of Savannah, regardless of whether it was a, a live action show that they brought over from overseas or uh, animation. And it, was, it was a great experience for me. It What's was, your most famous character that you ever played? That I ever well think means. I know you got to get it out there. Go ahead. I already know. Um, yeah, uh, the line that I use is, uh, "Hi, my name is Neil Kaplan. I'm best known around the world as the voice of Optimus Prime on a little show called Transformers: Robots in the Skies." So, <laughs> <laughs> sort of the George Lazen meets Transformers. <laughs> um, but no matter what happens in George Lazen's, Lazenby's life, he was always James Bond. And regardless, if I, if I stop tomorrow and open up a pet store um, in Pomona, and I just like the alliteration of that. <laughs> uh, but I'll always have that as, as a credit. And I've had a lot of people who have, who have let me know that that's pretty special. And I, for one, am really happy that they got Sean Connery for the movie. We'll just leave it at that. So back to power. <laughs> Talk about uh, the characters that you portrayed. Uh, I, I guess I'm a weird hybrid having played um, four on-screen characters, but also like four off-screen, well, you know, voice-only uh, characters I played, uh, Devastation, uh, The Indian Guard, and Bugglesworth in, uh, in SPD, um, and I've been voicing Mick uh, in Operation Overdrive, as well as playing Nork, who has his own vocal issues. <laughs> Have you done a lot of voice work before, Councilman? Have you done um, voice work? Well, I, I, when I, I did the drama school down in Wellington, and um, while I was down there, I sort of got in with the uh, Radio New Zealand. So I, oh, I did a lot okay. of um, radio stories for, for kids and radio drama. And then, um, yeah, so I haven't done a lot of sort of you know, the, the kind of ad work or, or stuff that, or, or previous TV and film voiceovers, but I've I done a lot of work on radio and so. I remember Kelson was on, I don't know if you guys remember on Dino Thunder, Kelson was on an episode of Dino Thunder. Stars Torn. That's right, Torn like a record, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 And, uh, that's right. And I remember Kelson, Kelson and I knew each other from before that, he came on the set, and I remember that the, basically the producers loved Kelson so much, that's why he's still back all the time. Like, how can we use this kid again and again and again? So, so there hasn't actually been anything like Kelson uh, uh, since then, he's just, he's always on there. They love him. 